بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم فار کلاسیفیکیشن ان مشین لرننگ وی ہیو اسٹڈیڈ ڈفرنٹ الگوریتھمز وی اسٹارٹڈ وتھ کین این وچ از ان انسٹنس بیس الگوریتھم بیکاز ٹو کیری اوٹ پریڈکشن اٹ کمپیوٹس ڈسٹینس فرام ایوری ادر پوائنٹ ان یور ٹریننگ ڈیٹا اینڈ دین وی اسٹڈیڈ نائف بیس الگوریتھم وچ از جنریٹو ان نیچر that computes the posterior probability using likelihood and prior probability. So naive base was generative in nature. Uh, after naive base, uh, we started with discriminative algorithms for classification. The first one was logistic regression. And then we talked about uh, very recently, uh, perceptron classifier. And now we'll start with another cl- discriminative classifier so called support vector machines or abbreviated as svm so svms are currently among the best performance for a number of classification tasks uh, for example they are currently the best known classifier on a well studied hand written character recognition tasks uh, they are also very widely used in bioinformatics due to their high accuracy their ability to deal with high dimensional data and the flexibility they offer in modeling diverse sources of data so the outline for this topic would be we will start with a uh, overview of svm uh, we will also study uh, very briefly uh, what do we mean by maximum margin classifier in fact svm is a one type of maximum margin classifier uh, after overview of svm we will start with hard svm uh, followed by uh, what we call soft svm that allows us to handle noise in the data and then we will talk about the kernel trick we use in svm uh, uh, to handle uh, the classes which are not linearly separable uh, and then finally we will conclude this topic uh, with one versus rest svm classifier for multi class classification task right okay let's start with overview of maximum margin classifier we assume that we have linearly separable classes and for linearly separable classes we know that we can use perceptron classifier to learn the decision boundary that is hyperplane that separates the classes and when we find such hyperplane we can have multiple hyperplanes separating the classes okay let's say for example we have these uh, points for from two classes it's a binary classification problem and when we learn when we use perceptron algorithm we learn hyperplane separating the two classes for example assume that this is a trend by your perceptron learning algorithm and when you initiate with some other point you get this hyperplane separating the two classes or maybe you run third instance of the algorithm you get this separating hyperplane of the two classes so all of these three classifiers in fact they are perceptron classifiers because they are separating the straight line hyperplane separating the two classes the question here is which one is the best decision boundary intuitively yellow separating hyperplane is better than green and blue why what is the rational of this intuition recall we are learning this hyperplane from the training data if we have made a small error in finding the location of the boundary or in estimating this boundary using learning algorithm the jolting of yellow boundary in its perpendicular direction gives us least chance of cause causing a misclassification relative to green and blue line if green and blue line are jolted in perpendicular direction slightly they will cause misclassification so we have more room for a yellow line and therefore we can say that yellow separating hyperplane is better than green and blue in fact this concept is known as that we are find we want to have 
a maximum margin classifier. And uh, support vector machine is among one of the maximum margin classifiers. Before we talk about support vector machine, uh, let's quickly review uh, this the concept of maximum margin classifier and what do we mean by classification margin and so on and so forth. Okay, margin of a data point is defined as the distance from the data point to the decision boundary. And in fact, I should write here from any data point to the decision boundary. And the idea of maximum margin classifier is that we choose a fat separator. Instead of find, finding a hyperplane, we choose a fat hyperplane. And when you choose a fat hyperplane that maximizes classification margin. For example, for, a, for, a, for, a, for the same uh, data, if we try to find a fat hyperplane, right? instead of finding this green line, if I try to fit this yellow line and separate into classes, so I'm I'm trying to kind, I'm trying to find a kind of a maximum margin classifier because the width of this or uh, the uh, the thickness of this hyperplane, what we call is margin. The margin is the width that the boundary could be increased or the boundary could be, uh, the width of the boundary could be increased before the margin, before the boundary hit a data point. The best boundary is the one that maximizes this margin or maximizes the distance between the boundary and the difficult points. The difficult points are the points that are close to decision boundary because that are going to influence the misclassification. So in maximum margin classifier, we choose a hyperplane that is approximately halfway between the nearest positive red and negative blue data points. And if we choose these uh, difficult points nearest to the boundary, classification margin is twice the width of the decision of the boundary from the nearest point. So this is an idea of maximum margin classifier. When we used perceptron learning algorithm, it stops. It gives you a classifier after classifying data correctly. It can be any hyperplane that separates the two classes. But in maximum margin classifier or in support vector machine, which we're going to study um, in the SQL, SVM stops or SVM gives us the best plane that has the maximum margin. That is the maximum distance between the data points of both classes. And maximizing this margin distance, maximizing the margin provides some reinforcement and so that future data points can be classified with more confidence. And uh, among maximum margin classifier, uh, very widely used or uh, 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 the simplest one is SVM classifier. And this gives us uh, the maximum margin separating hyperplane, right? Okay, let's start with SVM overview. So we want to find this maximum margin classifier, a fat separator. A support vector machine is a model that constructs hyperplane as maximum margin classifier. Uh, by definition, uh, we can use SVM for classification, we can use it for regression, or in fact, it is also used for uh, tasks uh, like outlier detection. We can use SVM for outlier detection. So the idea here is that SVM Gives us a set, it gives us a fat hyperplane that pushes against the data points. And we call these data points our support vectors. So support vectors are the points uh, that are uh, that your separator is pushing. In this case, we have the support vectors. Right? So this fat hyperplane or this maximum margin classifier. 
is supported by this blue point and this red point. And these are called the support vectors. Okay, how do we mathematically formulate the problem of finding maximum margin decision boundary or maximum margin hyperplane? We will formulate this very shortly uh, as an optimization problem. Uh, uh, in fact, what, what we know known as quadratic program. But before, uh, let's look at some of the variants of uh, uh, SVM. Okay, the first one is uh, what we call hard margin SVM and soft margin SVM. If I give you this classification problem, so we have the same data, but we have two points uh, that might have been incorrectly labeled, right? So for example, this point could have a blue label or this blue label could have a label of one, right? So, or these, these measurements or these points uh, are due to the noise in the measurements, right? And if I want to find, if I want to learn a simple perceptron classifier for this problem, what do I get? We have a problem here. Classes are linearly separable with some noise. So if you if you attempt to fit a hyperplane separating these two classes, and if you employ perceptron learning algorithm, perceptron learning algorithm will loop forever because it won't be able to find a hyperplane that separates these two classes due to these two points. So this one and this one. Agree? And the question we will answer, how do we find the maximum margin classifier or maximum margin decision boundary in this case? And the idea is, instead of using hard margin, we can use so-called soft margin. Hard margin is when you want to find a hyperplane that separates the classes given the training data, exactly. So no misclassification on the training data. That is hard rule, right? That there's a more strict condition. And if we can relax this condition, we try to find a hyperplane. We try to fit a hyperplane such that the class, the misclassifications are minimized. So we are not enforcing them to be zero, right? That is soft SVM or soft margin, right? So I have explained this hard margin idea, find maximum margin classifier with no errors on the training data and soft margin. We, we want to find a maximum margin classifier while minimizing number of misclassifications on the training data. Okay. So that was a, a very quick or very uh, shallow overview of hard margin versus soft margin classifier. And we will study in more detail. We will mathematically formulate hard SVM and soft SVM. But here we're just giving you a quick overview of hard margin versus soft margin classifiers. Okay, let's also very quickly review the so-called kernel trick we use in SVM. For simplicity, we just consider one-dimensional data. Okay, for example, I give you this data. And they ask you to find a maximum margin classifier. So the maximum margin classifier for this data would be would be this. Exactly the middle of support vectors. So here this blue is a support vector and this red is a support vector. So in the middle of these two, what we have as a maximum margin classifier. Right. How can we use SVM for this data? So this is not linearly separable. 
Right? How do we handle this? If you connect this with the concept of polynomial regression, we saw that polynomial or nonlinear functions helped us in linear regression to model nonlinearities. And if you also permit nonlinear functions here, and we do some mapping. See, I have this data and I'm going to map this to a two dimension space. So currently data is in one dimensional space. So I will, I'm going to extend the feature space by adding one more dimension to the data. And let's call it X square. Right? So, and, and, and if I visualize my data now, right? So I've simply projected uh, for each X, uh, I have taken a square of the point and that is plotted uh, along Y axis. So this red point here, it has this value of X and this value corresponds to X square and so on and so forth. So now my data is two dimensional, but what is good thing about this? This is linearly separable we can have a hyperplane separating the two classes. So general idea is that we project to original feature space to higher dimensional space. Here we have projected 1D to 2D to make the classes linearly separable. And this mapping function, here we have used X squared. This mapping function is referred to as the kernel function or known as kernel trick. The mapping function is kernel function and this method of projecting uh, original feature space to higher dimensional space is known as kernel trick. And by employing this kernel trick or by choosing appropriate kernel function, we can project data from a lower dimensional space to a higher dimensional space such that the data is linearly separable in the higher dimensional space. This is in fact, inverse of dimensionality reduction. So we had the curse of dimensionality in KNN and we employed dimensional reduction techniques to reduce the dimensionality of the data. But here we are expanding, we are extending the dimension. We are increasing the dimension of the data. But we also note here that the intrinsic dimension of the data remains same. We are projecting to a higher dimensional space, but the number of points are same. That would appear sparse in the higher dimensional space. Right? Okay, so this is a blessing of uh, the higher dimensionality instead of curse. Okay. Uh, if I want to demonstrate this for a two dimensional data and we move to from 2D to 3D. For example, if we have this data, so this is not linearly separable. This has a circular decision boundary. <coughs> but when we project this to three dimensional space, this is what we get. So if we use the same function, something like uh, x1 squared plus x2 squared, and you get a new dimension x3. So in three dimensional space, the data is linearly separable. We can have this hyperplane uh, separating the two classes, right? Okay, so that was an overview of support vector machines. We know what do we mean by maximum margin classifiers. Uh, we have a basic level understanding of hard SVM, soft SVM, and what we know as kernel trick. In the following videos, uh, we will talk about each of these in more detail, right? Uh, we stop here and we'll continue in the next video, inshallah. Allah